The Lives of the Saints by Father Alban Butler, September 17th, St. Peter Arbu. One of the greatest problems for the church and the state in Spain in the Middle Ages was the treatment to be given to the Jews and Mohammedans who inhabited the country in such great numbers. The problem was complicated by the hatred that the people manifested against them, a violent hatred that was not shared by the clergy who had Christian and tolerant sentiments, nor by the civil authorities who had a material interest in the welfare and tranquility of the heretics. Particularly during the 14th century, the Jews had conquered a great influence in finance, clandestinely and openly over secular and even ecclesiastical posts and positions. For a Jew to be able to exercise his influence in an ecclesiastical office, it was necessary for him to profess Christianity, and in the great majority of cases that profession was false. The very rare time that it was authentic, it was weak, superficial, and untrustworthy. In that conflict, there were two groups that caused the greatest disturbances and that were considered particularly dangerous. Those that the people called Moranos and Moriscos, that is to say the Jews and the Moors, respectively that for interest or for any other reason, had converted to Christianity and had received the baptism to later deny the faith openly or in secret. In the year 1478, in response to the repeated requests of the Catholic kings Ferdinand of Aragon and Isabella of Castile, Pope Sixtus IV issued a bull in which he empowered the monarchs to set up a tribunal to deal with Jews and other apostates and false converts. Thus was established the institution that history knows as the Inquisition of Spain. It should be noted in passing that although that tribunal was essentially ecclesiastical, it acted independently and even in contradiction to the Holy See. It should also be noted that although it resorted to harsh, cruel, and sometimes brutal methods, its basis and the theory of its constitution were not condemnable. That tribunal did not deal with bona fide Jews or Mohammedans, and all who voluntarily confessed their apostasy and promised to make amends were absolved from guilt and charge by a mild penance. A few years before the establishment of the Inquisition, a man named Pedro de Arbus had professed among the canons regular of Saragossa. He had been born in the Aragonese town of Expila about the year 1440 and had obtained a brilliant degree in theology and canon law at the Spanish College of Bologna. His virtues and his enthusiasm had inclined him to the religious life, but the fume of his zeal and his wisdom were the cause of his insistence on being called until he was removed from the cloister a few years after making his profession. The nascent tribunal of the Inquisition was then in the hands of the Dominican friar Tomas de Torquemada, who busily sought a provincial inquisitor for the kingdom of Aragon and did not rest until Pedro de Arbu took over the post in the year 1484. During the few months that he occupied the post, St. Peter preached and worked tirelessly against false Christians, apostates, and their characteristic vices, which were perjury, usury, and sexual immorality. Due to the extraordinary zeal that he put in the performance of his task, he conquered numerous enemies, and it was these who forged a campaign of slander and defamation against the Inquisitor and spread the legend of his cruelty, a fable that is known and repeated by many of those who do not know the real Pedro de Arbuy and who, perhaps, have had no other information about him than the portrait made by Wilhelm von Kaulbach in which the 44-year-old canon appears as a sadistic and tyrannical old man. Although in the time of St. Peter of Arbus, the Inquisition of Spain was more or less under the sway of the humanitarian spirit of the ecclesiastical authorities of Rome, there is no knowledge or record of the saint having pronounced a sentence of death or torture during the performance of his task. However, the Jews had decided to get rid of him. St. Peter was aware of what was being plotted against him, but did not want to take any precautions, even after an attempt to take his life was thwarted. During the night between September 14th and 15, 1485, three men crept into the Cathedral of San Salvador in Zaragoza and stabbed the saintly canon who was kneeling in prayer. Two days later, he died of his wounds and was soon hailed as a martyr throughout Spain. As such, he was canonized in 1867.